F major at its second chord. My name is Miles, and this is the podcast. When I'm not recording the podcast, sometimes I'm on the bus. Not, you know, it's just a matter of, oh, I like riding the bus. Sometimes I need to get places. I can't walk there. Sometimes, you know, I have to carry a gallon of apple cider. I don't want to carry a gallon of apple cider all those blocks. So I get on the bus instead. I go to the bus, and I swipe this card, because with the university, I have this card that I can just swipe and get on the bus. It's bundled into the, you know, the fees we pay at the beginning of the year. And it, it's nice. It's pleasant. I, I like the bus. Of course it's not. You know, sometimes you have to get stuck in traffic. But most of the time, I like the bus. Because, I don't know, it's good for people watching. Is it good for looking at other people and observing them? I talk about this, I think on this show about Sonder. That feeling you get when you look at other people and you wonder about the lives they have that you don't know anything about. The richness of their human experience. The buses are good for that. They invite that sort of thinking because everyone on the bus is going somewhere. They're going to work. They're going home. They're going to their loved ones. They're going to the store. Like, I go to the store. Who knows? Maybe they have plans. Maybe they have big plans and they're getting to the... They're on the bus getting to their future. You don't know any of that. You can only wonder. You can listen in on their phone conversations. Surreptitiously, of course. Sometimes there are people on there, you know, in twos or threes, and they talk to each other about things that only they know. You get on the bus and you observe these things. I observe these things. I enjoy observing these things. We're all moving towards our respective destinations at more or less the same speed. This kind of melancholy. You know, I'm in a certain mood on the bus. You know, sometimes I read, sometimes I check the news, but sometimes on the bus I just sit and think and watch as the blocks go by, you know. And you have to keep track of the blocks or else you'll end up past your destination. You can't have that as pleasant as the ride itself may be. You ride, and you ride, and you ride. Kedzie, California, Pulaski, wherever it is you're going. And you reflect on the movements in your own life and the impermanences and the, the transitions that are occurring within and without your existence. You're not really, and it's not that you're not in control, but it's that these things are happening and it's on you to react to them. You have to plan in your life. And on the bus, you have to plan as well. You have to plan out your trips because the bus doesn't just go anywhere. The bus has a route. There's a network of buses. You have to get off at Ashland if you want to catch the four. You got to get off at Pulaski if you want to catch the 53. But sometimes, you know, the 53 is a 10 minute wait. You might as well just walk. You have to get off, and you have to get on, you have to get off. You have to plan these trips in advance. You've got to go on Google Maps or something like that. And is it more efficient to do this? Is it more efficient to do that? Usually you want to take a train. If you can transfer from a bus to a train, trains are faster because, you know, they don't have to stop every couple blocks. You can just get on and just ride. And the trains are much the same as buses in that emotional regard. I've heard some fascinating conversations on trains. People that know each other talking, people that don't know each other sort of connecting over these shared things. Once my roommate found himself discussing his love of, of classical music with someone that we just met on the train and they were talking about, about Bach and how he could compose things entirely in his mind without putting them to paper. And then he would write them down fully formed. These are the things that you think about. These are the things that you encounter. These are the people that you meet out there. And there are oh so many people. And you will see them once and you will never see them again. But that's all right. Life is rich enough without repetition. You can go your entire life reflecting on these things as closed systems, entire of themselves. 
without worrying about repercussions. It's not the sort of story where everything ties back into itself. Some things happen once and there is no trace of them thereafter. You get on the bus, you get on the train, and you go wherever it is you're going, and it doesn't matter, really. It matters insofar as you get there, but how you get there, I mean, that's on you. Sometimes the bus is late. Sometimes the bus is early and you miss it and you have to catch the next bus and you're late like that. It's, you know, this sort of impersonal force that moves around you, that moves through you. And that's all right. I certainly hope it's all right. And in the meantime, you know, the same roommate and I, on a separate bus trip, found ourselves, not necessarily in conversation, on the listening end of a rambling monologue from this older gentleman with, you know, his, uh, with a cast and this bundle of sticks and this bag of, of empty, of empty soda bottles or something. And he was giving this long rambling monologue about the CIA and the FBI and the Republican Party and the Ku Klux Klan and the, how Jesus had reincarnated himself in the person of Barack Obama, who was living in the presidential mansion, not the White House. It was never called the White House. It was always the presidential mansion. It was a rather peculiar conversation that was compounded by the fact that our bus was not the bus he actually wanted to get on. And our bus driver had to spend a solid three minutes talking him gently out of the vehicle. It was a strange interaction. And while I would never wish it upon, you know, anyone, I'm sort of glad that it happened to me. It's a sort of uh, event that adds just, just the slightest bit of environmental color. This is a sort of thing you encounter, you know, when you get on these public spaces with these other people who have places to go. And, you know, some of these interactions don't make any sense at all. Some of these interactions are entirely random. But you have to take away something from them, right? You have to. Otherwise, I mean, there's no point. I certainly hope that I took something away from that. I don't know what it would have been, but... I don't know. I just like riding the bus sometimes. Obviously, I'm, you know, I don't mind not riding the bus. Obviously, you know... If I'm in a hurry, sometimes the bus is annoying because I'm at the mercy of this regular, regular rate of movement. But taken on its own terms. If I take it on its own terms, it's quite alright. <laughs>